people, Ichigo Naimi here. Welcome to my first ever Halloween special, where we will be playing Pokemon Red using only Ghastly. Now, the rules for this are the same as they always are. In battle, we can only use the single lone Ghastly. There will be no items in battle. Now this is normally the part where I say except for held items, but this is Gen 1. Held items don't exist yet. Now any other Pokemon that I do capture along the way will be purely for traversing the overworld, so they will not be getting any screen time. So with that out of the way, let's get into it. So we start out in Professor Oak's lab, where we select Ghastly from the starters. We name the Ghastly Spoopy, and then our rival, Summer, selects Bulbasaur, and immediately challenges us to a battle. Now Bulbasaur at this point only knows Tackle as a damaging move which Ghastly, as a ghost type, is immune to. So there is exactly a 0% chance that we lose this battle, and we just lick the poor little Bulbasaur slowly down until it inevitably passes out, unable to defend itself from the floating ball of gas that is Scoopy the Ghastly. And with that flawless victory out of the way, we're on our way to the first gym leader, Brock. Now Brock goes similarly well. Geodude and Onyx don't have any moves that can damage ghosts. So we just lick the Geodude to death as Brock goes for full heals whenever he gets paralyzed, and while his constant hardening is annoying, Spooky is at no risk of being fainted or otherwise losing the battle. And so, we level up and August comes out and we have Nightshade now. So we just use that until Onyx falls and we earn a rather free boulder badge. Now after all of this, you would think that Misty would be similarly easy. But as you just saw, Starmie is able to KO Spoopy with Bubble Beam, meaning we have to try again. So we start the second attempt by getting Starmie with Confuse Ray, which ended up not mattering at all. And after a couple of Nightshades, we're back to the Starmie. Now we hit Starmie with Confuse Ray right away, this time it matters a lot as Starmie ends up hitting itself a couple of times, while we take it out with Nightshade for a second try Cascade Badge against Misty. So with two Gym Badges in hand, we head off to fight Rival number two. Summer leads off with a Pidgeotto, which is immune to Lick because of its normal typing. However, Confuse Ray still works, so we're going to use that. Also, for some reason, Nightshade works against the normal types here, which works for our purposes, and Pidgeotto goes down without a problem, bringing out the Abra, who can do nothing except try and fail to escape using the Teleport, and similarly, Rattata can't touch us before it goes down to Nightshade. Bulbasaur comes in and is immediately confused, but manages to land a leech seed anyway. As annoying as that normally is, Bulba just isn't able to handle the nightshades from the level 24 Spoopy. So after that, we continue on to get the SS ticket from Bill, before we then beeline our way to the SSN and rival number 3. Pidgeotto comes out again and still isn't able to damage Spoopy before it goes down to a full of nightshades. Thus bringing in Radicate, which tries its best but only has quick attacks, so no problems there. Kadabra, even though it should know confusion at this point, only tries to teleport before going down. And the now Ivysaur just isn't able to keep up, and we're free to get cut and move on to Lieutenant Surge. 
just followed up by using Screech, and Voltor went down without doing any damage to us. Pikachu, again, uses an X speed, but it doesn't matter. Raichu was the only thing standing in our way at this point, and actually managed to get out with Thundershock, which did paralyze us. And Thunderbolt did a decent amount, but now we're on to the next gym. But before we get there, we have to take on Giovanni. We move these off with an Onyx, which quickly goes out to Nightshade. And that brings out Rhyboar, who tried to hit us with a horn attack, but did absolutely nothing. Chaos Khan narrowly avoids being taken out by Thunderbolt, and tries to use Comet Punch, which we're immune to. So we defeat Giovanni, grab the Silscope, and go on to the Girl Boss Gym. Erica. Against Erica, I misclick and attempt to use Dream Eater on the wide awake victory bell and get hit with sleep powder for my trouble. However, we wake up immediately and correctly click Nightshade, and somehow even though Rap doesn't affect us, victory bell is still locked into, which I'm okay with. What I'm less okay with is the super potions dragging out the fight, but victory bell goes down and Tangela comes out. Not for long, there was a couple of Thunderbolts is enough to take it out, which leaves just the vile bloom. And Thunderbolt not only crits, but paralyzes. Mega Drain does the negative damage, and Nightshade earns us a rainbow badge from Erica. So now it's on to rival number four. This time around, Spooky can deal with Pidgeotto using Thunderbolt. He's picked up a Gyarados along the way, which is four times weak to Thunderbolt, which means Growlithe comes out and tries to do something with Ember before going down to Nightshade. Kadabra comes up next and is still trying to teleport for some reason and gets taken down quickly. That just leaves Ivysaur, who pitifully flails around its vine before going down. So we're able to climb the tower and get the Pokey Flute, which allows us to go to Fuchsia City and challenge Koga. Who opens up with a coughing that gets taken out pretty quickly with a Thunderbolt. Muck is up next and follows suit. I have no idea whether or not that crit mattered. A second coughing comes out and does just as well as the first, and finally Weezing gets sent out, which surprisingly only takes out from Thunderbolt, but then uses self-destruct. But I'm okay with that because now it's on to rival five. Pidgeot falls quickly to Thunderbolt, and Gyarados did its best, but T-Bolt was too much for it. Growlithe didn't fare that much better, which meant Alakazam managed to hold on and get off a side beam, which did nothing and Nightshade finished it. Venusaur manages to survive a Nightshade and get off a Leech Seed, but was simply unable to stand up to Spoopy, and now we're on our way to Giovanni. And against Giovanni, we... Well, Nidorino isn't a ground type just yet, so Thunderbolt takes it out. Kangaskhan wasn't able to hold out, and then Rhyhorn is immune to Thunderbolt and hangs on with, from the Nightshade. Giovanni, however, wastes time with a guard spec, which doesn't do anything. And another Nightshade brought out the Nitto Queen, which actually meant, took three hits to finish off, but it's fine. And we're on to Sabrina. The easiest gym in Kanto, Kadabra, even though it managed to survive a Thunderbolt, hit us with a crit psychic, we 
really tank that. Mm -hmm. Mr. Vaughn, we immediately hit that with hypnosis, which meant it not only did anything, but we hit it with a dream eater, which managed to crit. And then the random Venema also falls asleep as soon as it hits the field, and Dream Eater hits it for weakness, which means we're almost at full when Alex Kazam comes out, and Thunderbolt did about a quarter to it, but it missed the side wave. And then it managed to land a side beam, which did nothing, and Alex Kazam was taken out, so now we have the Marsh Badge, and we're on our way to. Blaine opened up with a Growlithe, which wasn't able to stand up to T-Bolt, and it's on to Ponyta, who didn't do any better. Rapidash, however, managed to survive and does with a Fire Spin, which lasted a few turns, but ultimately did no damage, and once we got free another T-Bolt, so that us on our way to Arcanine, who survived and did us with Fire Blast, but, well, it wasn't doing enough. So, we're on our way immediately to Giovanni. Who leads with Rhyhorn, so we have no choice but to use Nightshade. But, Horn Drill is doing nothing to Scooby, and... Despite the Tail Whip, we're on to Doug Trio, who takes significantly more from Nightshade, and quickly goes down. Middle Queen comes out, and Nightshade did about half, but we only got hit with Tail Whip, and Middle Queen is down. Middle King still managed to survive and tried to hit us with Tackle, and after surviving the second Nightshade, yeah, we're on to ride on. Who survives and tries to hit us with Fisher, but it missed both times, and now we have the Earth Badge, so... He leads off with Pidgeot, who quickly falls to a Crit Thunderbolt. I have no idea if that mattered or not. And the Raghorn, however, took a little more time, because we have to use Nightshade, but it didn't do anything to us. Gyarados comes out and falls to a single Thunderbolt, and Growlithe quickly follows suit. Alakazam looks to have taken about half, but sets up a reflex, so a second one did not quite finish the job, but he just tried to set up another reflex. That crit would have been a lot better on the previous turn. And Venusaur took way less than half, but Razor Leaf did negative damage, even with the crit. And even though Hypnosis missed the first time, he was sleeping before long and Dream Eater finished the battle. So, Lorelei's whole team is very weak to Thunderbolt, so we just spammed that against Dugong, who managed to survive on very little HP and use rest, but then Nightshade finishes it. Cloyster was an Oko with Thunderbolt, and Slowbro was not any more difficult. Jinx, however, is not weak to T-Bolt, but still took over half from it and fell on the next turn. Lapras was all that was left, and it fell to a crit thunderbolt. So we've defeated Lorelei, and we're on to Bruno. Onyx is immune to thunderbolt, so we have no choice here but to use Nightshade. And he just tries to use Slam on us, which we're immune to. And a second Nightshade, and we're on to hit on Chan which survives Nightshade and hits us with Ice Punch. But we take it out rather easily and move on to hit on Lee, who also takes over half. And he just tries to use an X Defend, which is useless. So we round to the second Onyx and Bruno learns 
nothing and tries to use an X to defend. And we're on to Machamp, which we did with Hypnosis and then Dream Eater, and we've beaten Bruno. So with that, we're on to the Elite Four member I am the least worried about, which is Agatha. Agatha's lead Gengar, well, well, he was a little bit more difficult than I thought he would be. See, we managed to land a great Thunderbolt, but then he just hits us with Dream Eater while we're wide awake, and Nightshade takes him out. Golbat, however, is weak to Thunderbolt and falls to one hit. And against Haunter, we go for Nightshade, which does over half, and I mean, the responds with Dream Eater. Haunter falls to Thunderbolt, and Arbok survives. Agatha, for some reason, had clicked Super Potion on turn one, but it wasn't enough. And we're on to the second Gengar, which got hit with Hypnosis, but woke up immediately. However, it promptly went straight back to sleep, and then we showed Agatha how Dream Eater actually works. And it took two hits, but we felled the Gengar. A subsequent Hypnosis and Dream Eater combo on the Arbok, and we're through Agatha without taking any difficulty at all. Like she's just bad at Pokemon. So that leaves just Bird Keeper Lance. Lance opens up with Gyarados, which Spoopy quickly dispatches with a four times super effective Thunderbolt. His next Pokemon is one of the Dragonairs, which responds to our Nightshade by using Agility. And now Outspeed doesn't use his Agility again, but Nightshade just barely does a KO. We start trying to put it to sleep, and it takes a few tries to land Hypnosis, but once we do, Dream Eater finishes it off. The second Dragonair is next, and we miss several Hypnosis in a row, but it's fine because this thing just really wants to be fast. And eventually we give up trying to land Hypnosis to go for Nightshade, which again just narrowly misses the KO. And now we're out of Nightshade and use Thunderbolt. Aerodactyl quickly falls to Thunderbolt. Oh. And that leaves just the Dragonite, which survives our last Thunderbolt with more than half HP. Thankfully, Hypnosis hits, and a crit Dream Eater is enough to finish this in our favor, and all that's left is the champion. Now, Summer will always lead off with Pidgeot. It's the first slot in his party, it's the first Pokemon he sends out every single time, and thankfully, we have Thunderbolt to take care of it. So, we're on to Alakazam, which not only takes less than half HP from Thunderbolt, but does way more than I'd like with Psychic. We risk a nightshade and we're rewarded with him going for Reflect, and the second one punishes the Alakazam. Against Rhyborn, we go for Hypnosis, and while it lands, Rhyborn immediately wakes up. We fail to land a follow-up, but he just goes for Horn Drill, and... Well, another Hypnosis hits, Dream Eater crits, and we're on to Gyarados, which falls the Thunderbolt. So that brings out the Arcanine, which... Survives Thunderbolt, but then uses Ember. I don't know why using that instead of Flamethrower at this point, but either way, we're on to Venusaur. We're able to immediately put Venusaur to sleep, and Dream Eater leaves it in red health, but Summer has a full restore. A second Hypnosis lands, and Dream Eater once more leaves it on red. I anticipate a 